الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله we have to understand that the path of knowledge the طريقة العلم طريقة طريقة العلم that it's a steep path it's not an easy path لم يأتي العلم براحة جزد وكما قال السلف وكما قيل that knowledge does not come by being comforted or being comfortable in one's body by being comfortable that really the person on the path of knowledge is more than likely fairly uncomfortable because it requires sacrificing and striving while others are enjoying it requires making maraja you know making revision it requires sacrificing your time your wealth and sometimes your health in order to attain something and in fact it's a lifelong process it's a lifelong process even the ulama ulama sunnah wa ghayr ulama sunnah that you'll find that you know their life is dedicated to that because it's not just that they reach the level of knowledge and that's it if they want to maintain what they've acquired over the years they have to revise so it's it's a constant pursuit of knowledge and a constant revision of knowledge and a constant teaching of knowledge and a constant implementation of knowledge and that's why it's a steep path and why it's the path to jannah as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned من سلك طريقا يلتمسه به علما سهل الله له طريق سهل الله له به طريقا الى الجنه whoever traverses the path of knowledge Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. So of course, in order to get to paradise, in order to get to Jannah, it's a steep path. In order to attain knowledge, it's a steep path. And as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man salaka tariqan," whoever traverses that path, so that requires actually going on the path of knowledge, meaning that you're actually devoting your time to the pursuit of knowledge you're not talking about it you're not just making ta'zim of it you know saying exalting it and saying it's a great path but in fact you're actually traversing that path you're actually sacrificing your time to do that that is what it takes in order to get to paradise and that is uh, what it takes in order to follow that sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and achieve and attain the success that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is talking about that Allah will make it easy for you to path to paradise. <clears throat> and that's why the salaf used to say uh, some of the salaf used to say talib al ilm talib al jannah seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. Because it's not easy and it requires the intention it requires your intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to refute people not to belittle people. <clears throat> not to be little yourself not to just attain something in the dunya a nice paying job or what have you but it's really a steep path in order to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to learn how to worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala better in order to learn how to come closer to Allah azza wa jal that is the ghaya that is the hadith that is the the goal and the and the purpose and the intent And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in ma'mal bin yat 
really actions are tied to the intentions to let us know to educate his ummah to know that all good deeds anything that we want to achieve anything that any way in which we want to draw uh, seek clo- to draw nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal we have to have the correct intention it must be based upon ikhlas lillah and the second condition is that whatever we do is in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam And in fact, when we understand this usul, truly when we understand it and we practice it, that should dictate, if not help dictate, all the actions that we're doing. Even when we're speaking about controversial issues or we're getting into controversial topics or we're looking at nawaz and, you know, new issues uh, like a lot of the affairs that we're we're dealing with now, the COVID nineteen, the highlighting of institutional and uh, in- institutionalized racism and racism, uh, you know, permeating throughout the world and in many societies, or if not all societies, they all have to deal with it in some form or another, and. All of those things, it shows us as a Muslim what's going to help us deal with these issues is to keep grounded back in that that foundation, that asul, and understand that even when we talk about these issues, even when we engage, that we should govern our speech and govern ourselves by the book and the sunnah so that we, we don't go outside of that. I mean, giving examples about certain topics, that's not problematic. But what's problematic is when we begin to govern our speech and govern our ways of engagement by other than the book and the sunnah. That we begin to lose our focus as Muslims. I'm talking about as Muslims. I'm not talking about as members of a particular race or a particular community. But I'm talking about as members of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Because that's ultimately it We're not going to be asked about what our position was upon uh, a white supremacy What our stance was when we're in the grave We're not going to be asked about which black power movements we were a part of or we weren't a part of We're not going to be asked about which white power movements we were a part of And which we supported directly or indirectly But we're going to be asked... About who our Lord is, what is our religion, and who our Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those are the key questions and why it's important to try to govern ourselves and govern our our conduct, our interactions, our rulings by the book and the sunnah. By the Islamic boundaries. The Muslim is never allowed to transgress the Islamic boundaries. And that's something we find when we really, we find that in so many ways. And I'm seeing this so much with what's going on now, you know, with some of these contemporary topics, as well as some of the other issues. I see some of the students of knowledge and people who are considered Mashaikh in certain communities that they bend the rules. They're, they're becoming weak in their allowances. I mean, some things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes war on, they make allowance and say, well, we hope that Allah forgives us. But that's a very weak way for you to be a representative of the community. You're the sheikh. People are looking at you. If you allow these things and allow certain things to be permissible, you know people are going to piggyback off that hukum. And go, they will go beyond that. And even the hukum that you may be accepting is already a type of transgression or is going outside the bounds. It's, it's really pushing the bounds and the limits. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with a class with the bat. 
bless us to be of those who please him, seeking his forgiveness and his favor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, guide us, protect us, preserve us, protect our children, guide our communities, unite our hearts based on the book and the sunnah, help us to trans transcend the racial enmity and, and the, the issues of racism we have internally as a community and that we deal with and face with as a world community. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم